I'm going to uh, combine my two talks together into one um, and talk about the outcomes of, of open as well as robotic assisted uh, uh, cystectomy. So the benchmarks are, are shown here, uh, survival overall and cancer specific, positive margin rates, very important, lymph node yield is something worth comparing, and then the morbidities um, after the procedure. Um, we, we got to this uh, hoping to find a better way to do the surgery to basically summarize this slide uh, while still maintaining uh, at least as good cancer control, if not, uh, not improving on that, maybe uh, decreasing the morbidity. The indications for cystectomy are shown here. They're really not any different uh, for a robotic cystectomy, in my opinion, and maybe we can talk uh, and get the opinion of the, the uh, panelists here about uh, which patients are contraindicated for robotic cystectomy, but in our hands, uh, they're, they're fewer and fewer. Um, this, uh, a, a standard here, uh, it was proposed by Harry Herr and, and a, a group of urologists in, uh, in 2004 in the journal Urology, um, looking at, uh, at these factors here, the number of cases, they felt at least 10 should be done a year to maintain proficiency. One could argue this is a, um, you know, not a, extraordinarily high number. There are certainly places that are much busier, but I think this is a, a reasonable number. Margin status of less than 10 percent. Many centers of excellence have, have uh, margin rates that are uh, half or less than this, and margins in bulky tumors of less than 15 percent. Um, in, in many of the series that have been looked at in the U.S., a, a pelvic lymph node dissection is not done, so they suggest it should be done at least 80 percent of the cases. I think most people would say that should be 100 percent, unless there's really a compelling reason not to. And, and lymph node yield, we've talked about that, um, and Harry uh, her had some data looking at the SWOG uh, uh, series, the neoadjuvant chemotherapy series, um, and felt that patients who had at least 10 lymph nodes dissected uh, did better whether or not they were positive. So 10 to 14, and, and many of the series which we'll talk about have much higher uh, lymph node yields than that. Um, the IRCC is a uh, the International Robotic uh, Cystectomy Consortium that uh, Kurshid Guru started uh, in 2006. Um, and it, uh, the initial abstract we uh, had was in 2008, and this was from four. Subsequently, uh, we were up to 14 centers for uh, a, a second abstract, and this shows the development of the IRCC, and I'll be talking, a, a lot of the data that I'll be presenting is uh, the data from this consortium. Um, you can see now there are nine countries participating, 22 member institutions, that's probably over 25 now, uh, and, and over 50 surgeons, and the, the, the number of patients that we have in the database is, is uh, about uh, almost up to 1,500 now. Um, the first paper that was presented here, that uh, was published rather uh, in a, a peer-reviewed journal, was in the Journal of Urology uh, in 2010, so now two years ago, it was on 512 patients. This is from about 12 centers um, and looked uh, initially at the surgical margin rate, which was 7 percent overall within the, um, the margin rate that uh, Dr. Herr had suggested. Um, with 1.5 percent for T2 and 8.8 percent .8 for T3, 39 percent for T4. This uh, idea of, uh, of margins and oncologic outcomes has been uh, looked at in, in a larger number of patients, uh, and this is an abstract uh, from last year uh, on uh, 1,100 patients um, uh, that were collected between 2003 and 2010. Um, and the, the demographics here, just to highlight a, a couple of points, um, ASA uh, score of three or more, so a, a relatively high risk anesthesia in, in half of the patients, uh, preoperative chemotherapy in 15 percent, which reflects the practice in the U.S. where preoperative uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy is, is not given as often as uh, some experts suggest it should be. Um, in terms of pathologic outcomes, uh, over a third of the patients had extra vesicle disease. Um, the mean lymph node yield uh, was 19, um, with a fairly wide range there. Uh, the soft tissue positive margin rate in this group was 7.7 percent, um, and the number of positive lymph nodes uh, was 22 uh, percent. Um, the overall survival is uh, shown here. This is one and two-year survival. You can see from the numbers uh, along the bottom of the, um, uh, of the tables, it's a relatively immature series with only 
20 some patients out at, at five years. Um, and it shows an overall survival at five years of about 60 percent. Um, the graphic below uh, separates that out into uh, organ confined extra vesicle and positive lymph node disease and you can see that uh, each of those is, uh, is an important uh, factor negatively influencing the, uh, the overall survival. Uh, for open cystectomy, just uh, by comparison, uh, this is a summary of, of a number of series um, that I took from a chapter in Campbell's. The, the survival rates uh, shown here are, um, are probably similar to what we've seen, although uh, the data for the robotic cystectomy series is somewhat, uh, somewhat immature. Um, margin status that was important. You can see in the graphic in the upper, um, upper left-hand corner, uh, as was lymph node status. And those are both uh, statistically significant. Um, there was an expert panel of, of U.S. Uh, robotic cystectomists that was uh, convened. Uh, John Davis from uh, MD Anderson, uh, Eric Castle, Kershid Guru, and, and the others uh, shown there. And they pooled their data. Uh, they found uh, that uh, for T2 patients, 2% had a positive margin for T3, 17%. So uh, close to, to Dr. Herr's uh, uh, suggestion for adequacy of, of uh, surgery. Um, and the group uh, recommended that uh, surgeons to start with uh, simpler, less bulky uh, tumors until we're more comfortable with the planes of dissection. And we could see even uh, today in a, an early stage tumor, uh, some of the planes weren't quite as uh, readily evident as they, they could have been. Um, Margin status is, is very important, and this is uh, from a series of open surgical uh, uh, patients uh, from several uh, major institutions, MD Anderson and, uh, and uh, Baylor, um, and 4,400 patients were included. And uh, the overall positive margin rate was 6.3 percent, 1.2 percent for the T0 to T2, and 14 percent for T3 to T4. Pretty similar to what we uh, have seen in the IRCC. And uh, just to, to point out, the, the blue uh, line there uh, shows the uh, survival for patients with uh, negative margins and the green line with positive margins, emphasizing the point that a positive surgical margin in a cystectomy is close to a death sentence for the patients. Um, and uh, this is a paper published last year um, from uh, Indy Gill's group at USC uh, looking at, uh, at patients who recurred. The uh, uh, mean time to recurrence was 13 months and the survival after recurrence was 5.6 months with 97% of the patients uh, with recurrence dying of disease. Um, so a conclusion for surgical margins is that um, the rates are, are maybe slightly higher than the positive margin rates reported in some open series, but, uh, but comparable um, pathologic stage uh, and, uh, and margin status are, are very important. The survival, at least early on, appears to be comparable to open radical cystectomy, uh, and we need to follow these. Uh, switching to lymph node yield uh, and, and issues with that, as uh, Kershid indicated, and as you know, the, there's some controversy about how many is enough and whether uh, we can do a, an adequate job. So the IRCC uh, looked at its data for that, and again, the, and this was in a, a group of, uh, of 1,200 patients from uh, 21 centers at the same time frame for, um, for data. Actually, it was, I misspoke there, 765 patients who had uh, lymph node yield uh, information uh, available. Um, the mean yield is shown in the red box down there was uh, was 18.3, um, and there were differences in in how the the lymph nodes were uh, were taken, uh, consistent with the, the differences of opinion that are are seen. So, for the standard lymph node dissection, uh, you can see the the, the groups taken: the obturator, hypogastric, and external iliac, up to the crossing of the ureter. Um, for the extended, that included the common iliac and up to the auric bifurcation. One of the groups went above the IMA, and uh, 10 of the 19 institutions took presacral nodes. So there's a, a, a wide range of how things are done. Um, again, 24% of the patients had positive lymph nodes, and uh, a little over half had an uh, extended lymph node dissection. This shows lymph node yields from uh, various series, um, ranging from a high of 42 in, in Dr. Abaz's series, uh, down to 17 for the IRCC. 
Um, uh, interesting paper from MD Anderson uh, where they do an open uh, uh, urinary diversion. What they did is a, a lymph node dissection and then they made an incision for the urinary diversion and when they made the incision they went in and cleaned out uh, as much remaining tissue as they could find to see how well they were actually getting the tissue out compared to uh, uh, a final open uh, approach. And um, they uh, it felt that 93% of the lymph nodes were removed and uh, however in 20% of patients one or more lymph nodes remained. Whether that's uh, clinically significant or not I guess is a question but I think this argues that a pretty good uh, lymphadenectomy can be done um, which is essentially what my conclusion is there. Um, uh, another um, uh, series from Raj Pruthi uh, at, at North Carolina looked at 100 patients. This was published a couple of years ago now. Um, he had a fairly favorable patient mix, but still 20% with lymph node positive. Uh, he had no positive margins, which is a, a remarkable accomplishment, I think. Uh, mean lymph node yield of 19. And the, the other, uh, perhaps even more remarkable accomplishment is his length of stay of uh, 4.9 days. Um, he has a, a pathway which he adheres to pretty strictly and is often able to get patients out at uh, three days. I think uh, Dr. Abaza also has a, a pathway that's been pretty successful. Uh, many uh, who do uh, cystectomy find that their patients are still staying longer than that. Um, uh, he also reported a uh, complications in 36 of his patients, 42 complications, 8% of them clavian grade 3 and 4. Um, other series uh, have, uh, have looked at that and I have two of them here. Um, uh, the first one was a 41% complication rate uh, and then a, a series of Dr. Guru's patients, um, 156 patients with a 52% complication rate and a 21% readmission rate. So this is still a fairly morbid procedure. Uh, the open series that have reported complications uh, have similar numbers, I think, 49 to 64 percent. Um, there, there's a, a lot of uh, a lot in the details of how complications are reported and which complications are reported. It really cries for a standardization uh, of, of complication reporting, which Michelle Donat at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering has been spearheading, and which uh, the IRCC has uh, now uh, taken up. And um, this is uh, data from a number of institutions. Um, 21 centers again um, looking at complications and um, we were able to get 900 patients uh, who had their complications graded and analyzed in a, in a standardized uh, system using a modified Clavian system, uh, stratified by organ system and um, some logistic regression was done to look at predictors of 90-day um, complication rates and, and readmissions. Um, these are the, the patient characteristics. Uh, most of the patients were male. Uh, the ASA score again was uh, over three, uh, three or more in, in half of them. Half of them had had prior abdominal surgery. Again, about 16% had had chemotherapy. Um, and uh, the diversions were primarily ileal conduit, about two-thirds and one-third uh, continent uh, diversion. In terms of uh, how the diversions were done, about a quarter of them were intracorporeal. Uh, pathology outcomes are, are uh, shown here. Uh, there's nothing much more to say uh, about that. Um, in, in terms of the, the let me just uh, go back to this. Um, in terms of the, um, the perioperative outcomes, 15% um, of patients had transfusions. The mean stay in the ICU was one day with a standard deviation of about three days uh, and a range up to, to 36 days. Um, the readmission rates as shown at the bottom, 30-day readmission 13% and 19% of 18%. Um, most of the complications um, were low grade um, and, and most patients didn't uh, suffer a complication, about half did, but, but uh, half did have a complication. The list of complications is shown here and it's sort of the standard uh, list of, uh, of complications, mostly GI, some infections, some urinary, hematologic, and, and a host of other uh, other complications. Most of the complications um, were low grade, um, and, and most patients didn't uh, suffer a complication, about half did, but, but uh, 
have did have a complication. The list of complications is shown here, and it's sort of the standard uh, list of, uh, of complications, mostly GI, some infections, some urinary, hematologic, and, and a host of other uh, other complications. For high-grade complications, it was uh, the transfusion. 30-day mortality and 90-day mortality are shown here at 1 and 4 percent. So for complications, um, I think the, the morbidity is still significant, even with a minimally invasive procedure. Most of the complications are low grade, and uh, we, we all have to get better at, uh, at uh, prospectively collecting our complications and, uh, and recording them so we can uh, understand um, and compare open and, uh, and um, uh, minimally invasive approaches. A, a paper here, uh, just to summarize the, the thoughts of some of the thought leaders, including uh, at least the four people who are, are on the panel today, uh, Prokar, uh, Indy, Kershid, and, and Alex, um, it concluded that the complication rates are similar. Um, there may be some selection bias if, if we're saying that the complication rates are improved slightly. Margin rate is similar, the lymphadenectomy is adequate, and that we have to to follow these patients a little bit more. Um, so in terms of final conclusions, I think that the experience with this procedure is still early. Many centers have not done many cases and are still on their learning curve. Um, uh, even the expert centers, I think, are still still learning to some degree. Um, but the outcomes are similar for the, the margins uh, for lymph node yield and, and complications, and I think we uh, wait and we'll hear a little bit about uh, trials that are uh, upcoming uh, where there's actual randomization of patients to open or uh, robotic uh, procedure. So thank you. That's